Good morning, wrestling fans, and welcome to PWR. Today, it is the second day of spring, Matthew Thomas. It is March 22nd, 2022. The man they call me did, the Matthew Thomas of the PWR Today Show, Matthew Thomas. Matthew, it's Tuesday morning. How you feeling? Hey, you know, I mean, it's two days in, or one day, one full day in the spring. So this is the start of the second day. So I've got a full day of spring uh, under my belt, and uh, I had snow on the first day of spring, which is exactly what you expect on the first day of spring. Well, I mean, I'm from Wisconsin, so, I mean, we can have snow anywhere into May. So, I mean, it's it's happened. That is, uh, in fact, a true statement. Uh, but you know what? If you need to, like, keep yourself out of the elements and, uh, you know, want a fine article of clothing to wear that's going to keep you warm in the summertime or keep you warm in the wintertime and cold and cool in the summertime, you know what I would put on my body? I hope it's clothing. Yeah. Clo- the only clothing is uh, by Collar and Elbow Brand, available exclusively at CollarAndElbowBrand.com. If you want to save money on that said clothing, enter promo code Linda K L I N D A K A Y. Save yourself ten percent that you can use to uh, buy more clothing, or you can use to buy some flowers since the springtime. If you're a gardener and you want to plant your uh, flowers, you can do that. I don't care what you use the money on, but just save it at Collar and Elbow. So when you're getting ready to work in the garden, you always grab a hoe, right? Yeah, that's that's the number one tool you got to have for gardening. Oh, I think Idaho. that's common knowledge. Yeah, I, Idaho. So I don't know. Um, let us talk about something that's coming up next week, Friday. Matthew, it's almost here. Next week, Friday at Gillies in Dallas, the weekend of WrestleMania. It is the Kevin Nash Presents, along with PWR, Shenanigans. Matthew, are you ready to have some shenanigans? Oh, I'm I'm absolutely ready. It's been quite a few years since I've attended. It's been a couple of years since we've actually had it. So my goodness, this is going to be. I've never been. A, you've you've never been. So we're just going to see. Uh, we're just going to see you experience this firsthand, up close in person. Yeah, I mean, if you want to put it like that, yeah, you're going to see me uh, have my cherry popped um, in front of the others. And I'm going to which be... that's worth that's worth the price of admission itself there. I mean, you just <laughs> bring you. I mean, you know what you need to attend. You need to bring your whole family. Just watch Meathead. Just, uh, you know, well, we talked very... about Cherry Pop and Daddy's yesterday, didn't we? I, I can't remember if that was on air or, or off air, but just suit, suit, riot, riot. I mean, that that I know, you know, everybody has a name recognition of Kevin Nash. But I, I mean, I think you're really burying the lead. This this is a front row seat to a very special experience for meathead and i think that's how you need to market it <laughs> all right so kevin ash brings uh, shenanigans dallas xxl to gillies in dallas friday april 1st plenty of packages available at shenaniganspartycom uh so far announced remember just because we announced these talents that doesn't mean they're the only talents that are going to be there right i mean some cannot be announced and we'll just be at the party to be at the party kevin ash X-Pac, uh, Adam Shearer, the Titan, formerly known as Braun Strowman, they're going to be part of uh, the VIP tickets. That's Nash, X-Pac, and Adam Shearer. Also involved in the VIP and general admission tickets will be Al Snow, Scotty Too Hotty, SoCal Val, and Renee Michelle. And then involved in the uh, guests, or excuse me, involved in the uh, rest of the uh, party is uh, Conrad Thompson, Eric Bischoff, Jeff Jarrett, EC3, uh, we just got confirmation from David, the Popcorn Night Hero, earlier on uh, this morning. Uh, Katie Forbes going to be in the house. Miss RVD, uh, Ken Anderson, Anderson will be in the house as well. So again, this is your chance to hang out, watch a little bit of wrestling action on the TV with X Pac to watch the Hall of Fame ceremony, seeing the Undertaker's induction. Plus. Really, I mean, just to hang out and kind of, you know, rub elbows with some of the latest and greatest in the wrestling community. And after a couple of years of being locked down and not being able to do said things, I mean, don't you just want to just, I know I like to just rub elbows with strangers now when I'm in public because for so long you couldn't. I mean, you can rub elbows. I thought you or, had a restraining order on everybody's <laughs> elbows. You know, I mean, it's just a nice little, very sanitary thing you can do. I mean, it's it's really come back a lot here recently. So yeah, come down there to Dallas, shenanigans, rub elbows with. Uh, hey, I mean, I'll be, 
you know what? You can actually rub both of my elbows. I'm that generous. Yikes. Yikes. All right. If you go Platinum VIP, you get open bar, free food, reserved VIP table, a private server, the private meet and greet, autographs and pictures with Nash, X-Pac, and all the VIP and official guests. VIP guests will have access to their own VIP lounge area and all of our invited guests. <coughs> all of your guests are covered with this package, or all of your costs are covered with the package for the night. If you go gold VIP, get the open bar, the free food, the uh, private meet and greet, autographs and pictures with Kevin Ash, and all the VIP and official guests. Now, silver admission tickets include a meet and greet, autographs and pictures with all the official guests, and access to all the invited guests. Silver tickets do not include Kevin Ash, X-Pac, VIP guest drinks, or food, which are available for purchase. And new this year, you can add a drink package to your silver ticket and get open bar all night. This party is close to the American Airlines Center, WrestleCon, and most all other WrestleMania weekend events, so you can come after and do not miss a moment of the fun. Entry to the event will be allowed all night. So, again, you know, don't worry about what time. Even if you've got tickets to the Hall of Fame, come on over after. We're going to have this thing open all night long. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's uh, more importantly, it's within walking distance from where I'm staying. So, um, I mean, you know, just uh, I believe it's in walking distance from where I'm staying, too, if I look that up correctly. My goodness. I mean, we have planned this thing out very, very well. So, Matthew, I got to ask you this question. Have you looked up? Does the city of Dallas or Arlington have those bird scooters? (laughs) I don't know. That's what I, I need to be getting from hotel to all the events, just bird scooting around. Or, you know, I'm sure we could find one of those, uh, like one of those rickshaws or something, you know? Oh, you, my God. We got to get, we've got to get Matthew Thomas to be renting out his body to run a rickshaw. Here's, here's the thing. Um, you know, when you, when you go and there's rickshaws around a town where like there's a concert or something, a lot of times the rickshaws are equipped with audio and they will actually be playing the artist's music. If they know what they're doing in Dallas, man, you got to think they're going to be blasting out entrance music from those rickshaws. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Again, shenaniganspartycom Go ahead and get tickets. We'll see you guys there again next week, Friday. Matthew Thomas, the man to call me dead, Linda K, the popcorn night, David Hero, Big D may even be there, and everyone else from the extended PWR family, including uh, senior intern Cal, who's now the kid with the fanny pack, Cal Hero. And, I mean, Meathead, you and myself might actually be these the people that are paying for, like, the private server. We might even be, be the private server for all I know. Um, you know what? Honestly, if they strap one of those uh, suspender gimmicks on me that holds the cigarettes in a box in front of me, I might <laughs> I might be selling cigarettes. I don't know. Well, we'll see, see. I'm, I'm picturing it more of us, you know, walking around with the little uh, cloth on our arm. Uh, what what did they call Reggie when he first premiered? What was his What was his title? He's a sommelier. Yeah, yeah, we'll be like sommeliers. Yeah, because I know a lot about wine. That, that, <laughs> that's my job. Yeah. Let's move on here. Uh, Johnny Gargano also announcing that he's going to be in the area as well uh, doing WrestleCon. Again, uh, what you're going to find is a lot of the guys and girls that are hanging around an area, working the WrestleCons, working the independent shows. You know, Ring of Honor's got a, a, a Supercard as well. We didn't talk yesterday about the main event at Ring of Honor Supercard, did we? No, we didn't. We might have talked off air or we might have communicated. I think we talked off air. Yeah, we forgot to talk about it on air. Matthew Thomas at the exact same time that the Hall of Fame uh, ceremonies are going on, Ring of Honor's got a super card that Tony Khan said that he will be running because, you know, everybody had already committed to the date and the talent. The main event, FTR and them boys. Reach for the sky, boy. The Briscoes and FTR at Ring of Honor super card. Hey, this is a match that everybody wanted, and this is a way to get some name recognition out of there for Tony Khan's new... Uh, new product basically roh so uh, there is going to be no shortage of things to do uh wrestlemania weekend speaking of wrestlemania weekend i kind of wondered last night while we were watching and i had forgotten already even though it's only been a month where was bobby lashley oh yeah that's right bobby lashley was taken out in the elimination chamber there's talk he could be ready by wrestlemania time really that's quite interesting um that would be fantastic, and that would actually put uh, another one of Team Nelson Mandela's uh, people in WrestleMania. You know, it's been a it's been an interesting few weeks with Lashley out, and then Big E out with that 
horrible injury, man. I mean, the, the team of Nelson Mandela has been picked off one by one. So that would be fantastic to see Bobby and also to uh, get me some more points. Quite possibly. Let's talk about Raw from last night. <clears throat> Raw was at the Allstate Arena in Chicago. Matthew, have you ever been to that building? No, I never have, no. Smells like an armpit, but probably one of the best crowds you're ever going to come yeah. up, uh, across. The building is old and decrepit. It used to be the uh, uh, Rosemont Horizon. Yeah. Um, the scene in multiple WrestleManias, including my first ever, WrestleMania 22, which held the very glorious match of Booker T and the Boogeyman. It's a match they're still talking about today. They're still talking about today. Well, I am. Yeah. But uh, they were at the All-State Arena, and if there wasn't a better crowd to pull off what they pulled off at the beginning of the show, they open, the glass breaks, the crowd go banana, okay? And here comes, and they have the camera panned back far enough. Well, that guy's kind of thicker. He's yeah, got a ball, yeah. but he's got a beard. Oh, <laughs> ah. All right. The only thing left is, is it a bald cap? They haven't gotten close enough yet, and yeah. it's a bald cap. <laughs> Fantastic. In my initial thought was, I can't believe they're doing it, and then give it five or ten seconds when you haven't seen them. I'm like, eh, I don't think they're doing it. This would be great if they were trolling the crowd, and sure enough, they were. And what I thought was fantastic was when the glass broke the second time, and they thought, again, they were getting Matthew, he could have done that three four times. Do you remember, um, did you ever see the movie The Last Boy Scout? Uh, can't believe, I can't Bruce say Bruce Willis, again. Damon Wayans. There's a scene in there where he goes, uh, can you give me a light? And then he goes to light a cigarette and punches him in the face. He goes, I got him. Here, watch this. Do you want a light? Okay, yeah. <laughs> he goes, two for two. Got him, two for two. He goes, <laughs> yeah, try it again and I'm going to kill you. I, seriously, he could have kept going on and goes, I could have got you three times. I got you four times. He could have kept doing that. Yeah. All he had to do was sell it like he did on time two, on time three, on time four. He could have kept doing it, but absolutely tremendous. Well, and notice he started taking off the the uh, the knee brace, too, when the glass. The knee the brace was time. loose before he yeah. even started talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. But he, uh, he tried to finish the job there. But, yeah, he did a great, great job selling that. Um. I have a bone to pick with this particular segment, though. We understand. I mean, we've watched wrestling for a long enough time, right? We understand that the guys that are taking bumps are usually professionals. They're usually workers from a different thing. It's gotten so ridiculous, Matthew, that the guy that was handing out the beers was wearing fake spray tanner. Yeah, yeah. I mean, here's the thing, man. You're going and you're going to be a stagehand and throw beers. you got to look your best, dude. <laughs> I I get it. I mean, I understand. It's high definition, but let me let me ask you this. Did you think for a fraction of a second they were gonna pan over to the guy throwing the beers and it was gonna be some dude with a hat and a hood on, and then you're gonna realize, oh, it's stone cold. I thought that was a possibility, but that could be next week. Yeah. But I don't want that. Stone Cold cannot no, show up next no, week. No, no, absolutely not. I mean, here's the thing. Stone Cold is not advertised as having a match. He's advertised as being a guest on the KO show. Right. So, like, you, you're not going to put him anywhere prior to Mania because nope. his thing is he is a guest. <laughs> right. So, no, don't have him show up. He can pop a video on the screen. Yeah, and I think that's that's fine, but yeah, he's he's not going to be there in person. No, and to be honest, as we're going to get to it uh, throughout the night, uh, Raw next week is loaded. It's double loaded because the SmackDown is going to be live, and they're going to be doing the uh, Hall of Fame ceremony right yeah. after. I think yeah. they front loaded the Raw next week as the go that's, home. Yeah, that that makes a ton of sense. Okay, let's get into the show. Uh, Austin, nope, Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens with his bald cap hits the stunner on the uh, guy chucking the beers up, the Stone Cold Steve Weisers. And uh, basically, it's a rundown session of uh, Kevin Owens. But you know what? This is a spot. This is probably Kevin Owens' biggest spot yeah. that he's ever had in his career. And Kevin Owens earned it. I mean, he really did. Yeah. Um, I, the only thing that harkens back to this was when he was in the storyline where he actually attacked Vince. And you were working the program with him and Shane. 
Um, you know, not that not putting Shane in the same conversation with Stone Cold as far as in ring work, but as far as rubbing elbows like we were talking about earlier. Yeah. The top names and in that in an era where not Vince is not letting everybody attack him. So I think right. these are two two of his top of the card uh, accolades. This here. one is the best one ever. Yeah. I mean, it's and like I said, he earned it. Uh, he's got the respect in the back. He's got the respect in the front from the fans. He's absolutely earned it. And he's working a dream program with his childhood hero. Tag team match. The Mysterios, Ray and Dominic taking on the Dirty Dogs, Robert Roode, Big Bob, and the NXT champion. Matthew Thomas, I just don't get it. If we're supposed to forget that NXT doesn't exist yeah. because Pete Dunne's name is Butch, but we don't remember that. Why are they telling us that NXT exists in this world because the NXT champion is on Raw? It exists in Raw world, but not SmackDown world. That's the two distinctions. Good God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All hey, right. It's the well, WWE universe, so they can like choose what universe you're in at any given time, man. Mysterious win by pinfall. Um, Seth Rollins is backstage <laughs> uh, because during this match, Seth Rollins interrupted. Right. And he says, I know how I'm going to get my match. He cut the match off. So the wrestlers never got counted out. Everything just stops, you know, when Seth talks. But speaking of cutting out, is Mike cut out? And then finally he went back, went back to talk to Sonya Deville and Adam Pierce, scrapped daddy. And uh, they pulled the same shenanigans that they pulled last week. You know what? I think we could work something out for you. And what we ended up finding out from this segment is that Seth Rollins, if he beats AJ Styles, can have AJ Styles plays. Dumbest stipulation yeah. ever. And, and here's, you you know what they're doing, but let's look at this from, you know, a kayfabe perspective of how idiotic would this be from Adam Pierce or Sonya Deville as far as you've got a WrestleMania dream match that you are compromising. You know, oh, you can take his place if, if you beat him. The same thing with the freaking Stone Cold thing last week. So if you look at this from a perspective where you're trying to buy in and this stuff actually makes sense, they are completely jeopardizing the card that they have built for their biggest show of the year. By the way, at the end, The Miz also ripped off Rey Mysterio's mask. Um, I like, this is one of the things that I'll give WWE credit for. WWE allows Ray to protect his heritage and lineage yeah. with the mask. Because WCW took it off of him. He yeah, lost yeah. Kevin Nash. Um, and we knew what Ray looked like for a long time. And Ray's a good-looking dude, man. I mean, he's, you know, Ray was one of the filthy animals in WCW. However, um, him pulsating in pain when his mask isn't on is a little weird. I mean, did the scar from his eye getting plucked out not heal very, right? Very possible. Okay. Two on one handicap match. Omas taking on Apollo Cruz and Commander Aziz, and you didn't want to actually build up Apollo Cruz and Commander Aziz, did you? No, Omas no, with a no, victory. Of of course not. Yeah, um, I don't know where is he going to have a spot at WrestleMania. Like, what what are they doing here? This, uh, yeah. Welcome uh, to the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, Commander Aziz and Omas. Has that officially been announced? Nope. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the thing of it is, you know, Omos did win. What was the Battle Royal at a pay-per-view last year? I mean, so he's got a Battle Royal win under his belt. I don't remember. But RIP to Apollo Crews and Commander Aziz. Yeah. Yes, indeed. AJ Styles is in the ring. Uh, they give him a nice ovation. Uh, and then here comes Seth freaking Rollins again. And this is when it happens. He gets AJ spot if he beats him. Two weeks in a row, Seth Rollins is able to convince, you know, again, is this, where's Wiley Coyote in the Roadrunner? Because this is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, you would think they have got a plan with who Seth Rollins is going to face at WrestleMania. And the the way forward is to probably not tell us until WrestleMania. And you just got to wonder you know, last week as a one-off was somewhat interesting. This week was a pattern. To and win to win a match to get an interview? No, it yeah. wasn't. It was terrible. You know, and you are in you're in a very, very predictable pattern here. 
And my other thing is if you've got – if you know where this is going, uh, you know, wouldn't two weeks worth of a bill to exactly who he's going to wrestle and promos they don't need the build. be worth They it? don't need a promo. The crowd did it for him. Yeah, yeah. And Anthony Thomas, the, the crowd continued chanted that man's name. And, you know, I'm not trying to bring it up because I don't like to, to work in, you know, hyperbole or, you know, uh, rumors or anything like that. But the crowd clearly told us who they think that's going to wrestle. And Seth it's former uh, former TNA Impact superstar uh, Cody Diener, right? No, 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 not at all. That's, that's, that's what I thought they were talking about. ODB is still married to Cody Diener, I believe. Oh, in that world. okay. I got you. So we could ask ODB if that were the case. Yeah. All right. Uh, women's tag team match. But beforehand, Carmella and Zelina arguing and fighting backstage. Yeah. Uh, the seeds are definitely being uh, sown for them to dis evolve as a tag team. And I think that's going to happen at WrestleMania. I do not see them retaining those belts come WrestleMania time. Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley take on Natalia and Shayna Baszler, who have been a team now for, I think, three weeks. But they're going to be in the title match uh, at WrestleMania on Sunday. The winners of the match by pinfall Natalia and Shayna Baszler, and then Queen Zelina and Carmella attack both tag teams and then reconcile in the ring. Uh, it's, you know, they got a little spat, but uh, nice to see they you know, smooth things over. <laughs> Was Becky Lynch wearing a set of glasses under her glasses? I kept that's all I stared at when she had them on. I'm like, is she wearing a welding mask and it has sunglasses underneath? I mean, it looked cool, but what a great promo from her last night. Um, she kept telling it was story time with Becky Lynch. You know, uh, what is it worth? You know, uh, and again, I don't want to uh, misquote her, but something about the, you know, when a man sells his soul to whatever. And she is the man. So I thought it was absolutely well delivered. No, she did great mic work. And she's somebody that really has done a great job of Telling that story and building up her WrestleMania match in last night was, I think, the icing on the cake there. Austin Theory uh, taking selfies backstage when Sarah uh, came to interview him. So apparently if uh, Austin Theory talks to his mentor, Mr. McMahon, McAfee won't even have a job as a commentator if he touches him or interferes or gets physically involved in his match. And his match is going to be, again, Austin Theory versus Finn Balor. There's got to be something else. Where was Damian Priest last night? Yeah. We're two weeks away from WrestleMania. Where was Damian Priest? Nowhere to uh, to be seen, man. Good uh, grief. You know, maybe he was trying to get that challenger back because that was originally his challenger on NXT. Maybe NXT uh, doesn't exist. Maybe oh, he's wait, down. It does, on, it does on Raw. Maybe he's down trying to, uh, you know, see if he can get, get his car back, man. For I all guess. I guess. Austin Theory taking on Finn Balor in a non title match. Uh, Pat McAfee interference was fun for a little bit, but it was it got to be a little bit too much at times. Yeah, I mean that's the thing though. We are uh, we're holding pattern for several weeks now. Um, you know this is just uh, fairly predictable as we're getting in these final curves of the road to WrestleMania. All right, but uh, Finn Balor wins by pinfall due to shenanigans pun intended there from Finn Balor uh, non-titled tag team match raw tag team champions RK bro taking on the Alpha Academy which was preceded by a Snickers commercial from the Alpha Academy did you see the commercial uh, yeah I, I like that you know I think they I uh, thought it was backwards at the end because when Gable goes I oh, thank you shouldn't he be the one getting the Snickers and saying thank you no yeah. yeah, little little things they don't tend to think about okay all right Winners by pinfall are Raw Tag Team Champions, RK Bro, a little interference by the Profits as well, coming out in vintage Chicago Bulls uh, inspired gear. Matthew, the intergender tornado tag team match for the 24 7 championship. Dana Brooke and Reggie taking on Kira Tozawa and Tamina. This, uh, the one thought that kept coming through my mind was attitude era silliness. And this got the spot of the evening where somebody's in the ring for like 15 minutes because we had the backstage stuff, then we had this, then we had a commercial. Mm -hmm. And it, my, my thought process while this is going on is, I mean, how are we – how is this continuing to be such a big chunk of TV each week? It, it's just – that's you're exactly right. It's Attitude Era silliness, and it's uh, – 
it's the stuff. You know what that, was great about the stuff backstage is that our truth almost got a pinfall. Yeah. He tried. Get out of here. <laughs> See, our truth. You know what? Even on that little stuff right there is why we love our truth. And here's the thing too, with them doing this storyline that they're doing with all four of these people, I think that title has long since stopped elevating people. I mean, it was our truth. When did it elevate anybody? It was entertaining, and it gave people like our truth something to do, you know. And it gave them something to do, but it never elevated them. John Cena and, elevated them with Little Johnny, but that belt never elevated them. And uh, here, it's just. Uh, my goodness, I, I don't know quite what else to say about that title right now. It's a joke. And that's the whole thing, and they don't care. The main event was AJ Styles and Seth freaking Rollins, Matthew Thomas. The text message right before the match started was what? Uh, it said, Matthew, you are a uh, very wonderful person, and I love you very much. Okay, but when your mom was done, what was the text <laughs> message from me? You said <laughs> this match was going to end when Edge interfered and cost Seth Rollins the match. Yep. Not that I wasn't, you know, uh, enjoying the match, because I really was. But, I mean, the only possible way to get out of this was that Edge was going to make sure that AJ won by attacking AJ, and then AJ won due to a uh, uh, disqualification. Seth yes, Rollins uh, beat up the set last night at the end of the night, and uh, he says that, that there is no Raw next week unless he gets his WrestleMania moment. Yeah, um, I, I'm curious as to what we get next week. If we uh, if we get any hint that there will be something for him in WrestleMania, or if it's more of the same, and you know we can expect Seth to try to come out and hold up uh, you know WrestleMania at some point. Do uh, Sonya Deville and Scrap Daddy Adam Pearce say, you know what, enough of this? We just signed a new talent. <coughs> this talent will debut at WrestleMania, and you get that match. Do they say that? I don't know if we get that much. I really don't. Um, Do they just tell them, all right, Seth, there's a spot for you. We haven't signed this talent yet, but uh, we're working out some details. We might have something for you. <laughs> I don't know, man. All I'm all I'm picturing right now is uh, is John Cena at the at the second match in or whatever it was at that WrestleMania. Just Drinking doing beer a dead, in the stands? Yeah, and then just doing a dead sprint down the uh, – down the, the entrance ramp to go back and change or whatever he did. Okay. Which one was that? Was that Dallas as well? <sighs> was it Dallas? I can't remember. I don't know where it was seen undertaker. What year was the undertaker? Oh my goodness. That was never an officially announced match. Um, it might, it might've been Dallas. 34. Uh, I don't think it was Dallas though. So, uh, let's see. WrestleMania 34. Hold on. Stand by. WrestleMania 30 Bora was in New Orleans. Hmm. It's in the Silver Dome. I mean, the Super Dome. You know what we need? We need next week, we need Seth to come out and do his thing again. And then we need Undertaker's music to hit. And guess what? It's fake Undertaker. So it's really Kevin Owens. He's just, he's playing oh, Undertaker. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what we need. Now, you oh. know what I, what I told you, though? I want to see... Seth, try to get desperate next week and come out and challenge Becky. Oh, I said, I said to you, I said, you know what? Seth Rollins needs to challenge the women's tag team championships and put him himself into that four way match. You know, just to get a match somewhere. Yeah. That would Hell, be cool. Maybe he wins the twenty four seven belt and it finally <laughs> elevates him. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, I. At the very least, if we're going that route, I want to see him interrupt every segment next week. Yeah. He could be the Teddy Long. He'll make tag team matches all day long. <laughs> holla, 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 holla. Oh, my goodness. Well, Seth Rollins also appearing in shenanigans. Just kidding. That is not official. <laughs> all right. Matthew Thomas, that is the show. And that's five episodes of PWR Today in a row with your voice. I think that's we've right. had enough. That's right. My goodness. This is like three is a trilogy, and then four is like a four a G. And then five is like a five. This is like Matthew Thomas five, five a G or fiveology is what it is. So if you get to eight, you know how it's an octagon. Would an eight be a orgy? Uh, yeah, yeah. That that sounds about. That's right. gross. All right. 
For Matthew Thomas, the man they call me dead, we get classy tomorrow with Linda Kay and the man they call me dead talking a little bit of NXT. So long, everyone.